Welcome back to Gilpak Wen. As you can see, work is progressing rather nicely on the uh, rock faces and the back scene. Uh, and I'm currently working on the little dark area just here. Uh, low relief really on the rock faces. That's, that is Deprom, which I'll be covering in a minute. But they, this area along here is all painted with watercolours and emulsion paints. And at the moment, just very slightly suggested, but there will be a bit more detail coming in. You can see this piece, this piece here. This goes under here, under this piece here. I've taken it out for ease of access to the back here because it sticks forward a bit and I don't want to damage it when I lean on it. So as you can see here, the back scene has been painted. This is Deprom, which is a light foam board. Very flexible, easy to cut with a knife. And I'm using it to create the low relief slate rock on here. This is the basis for the slate rock, like I've done here with the expanded polyurethane foam and covered, covered it with Artex and painted it. This again is not quite finished because I have to put water and grass on the top here. The back scene, as you can see up here, is semi-finished. I have the sky to put in, but at the moment I'm concentrating on the landscape. So what I've done, I've cut this stepron into strips, various sizes of strips, various lengths and widths. And I've used a panel adhesive to stick the short pieces. Let's find this panel adhesive. And there we go. And what I do is just put a dab on there, dab on there, dab on there, and I just push the, the depth on in. I'll do a piece and I'll show you what I mean. So I'll build this bit up here. I'll snap a piece off. I'll spread a little bit on there. This panel adhesive is pretty instant grab, so it's useful to have. I'll move that piece there, put that piece on there. Move the glue around a little bit because it doesn't dry that quickly. I take this rather thicker piece and snap that off and stick it on there. I can't come out too far here because the track is quite sharp radius. I may change that radius and may bring the track over a little bit to clear it. But uh, there wasn't an awful lot of clearance on the quarry tops, quarry galleries as I'm led to believe. They are quite tight on uh, spacing. All this that you'll see here will be covered with Artex, as I've said earlier. This, this back scene here that, if you remember an earlier video, was a piece of plywood and I've painted it very, very suggestively, if you like. <laughs> quite Not quite the right way to say it, but I suggested that there is rock that has been worked out here. Uh, further back and up here, I've just sort of painted very, very uh, loosely uh, an engine shed, a loco shed, high level. Um, so that kind of fits nicely. So I'll break another one off and I'll just, I'll just put a, a dab on the back here and that will go on there. Like so, it doesn't, it can be very, very random. Um, well, because the way the rock was blown out of the, uh, out of the uh, hillside or the mountainside. Um, as an example, uh, whether you can see that or not, but there's an example, this is the Norwick and there's a pathway which they've made safe for people to walk through, through the quarry. But you can see there's quite pronounced lumps of uh, rock there and up further. Well, you can see the grass on here will be 
replicated on here at this piece here on this ledge. Um, down here there will be more grass, up here there will be grass and on these little rock ledges here there will be grass so it becomes more natural. And there was a lot of vegetation actually once the uh, quarry or that, that gallery had been worked and left alone Mother Nature took hold and um, the little grass would, would grow uh, then you get small saplings come in things like silver birch which I have, have suggested on here and up here from the distance they're not very obvious but I think the brain and the eye picks it up uh, and it becomes part of the scene the same with the back scene really on the on the landscape pa painting the landscape it's very crudely done but taking in the whole sort of landscape it becomes one uh, and you kind of the brain kind of does most of the work it's like an artist will perhaps painting a house an old house he would suggest maybe the brickwork um, on the corners put a bit of detail on the corner if there was coining the, he would paint the coining up the corner of the building if there were many windows there will be two or three windows painted in detail and then there will be two or three maybe suggested detail so you get a perhaps a quarter of a frame and a bit of lay bars and a, a couple of sashes um, and it will be suggested the brain would do the rest so um, that's how I work with my back scenes. The brain does, if you know it's a quarry, the brain says, oh, that's a quarry. That looks okay. Fine, I can see that's rock, even though it isn't. So um, that's how I work on my, my landscapes. As far, as far as the distance is concerned, I think it's very relative uh, that it is not heavily detailed, just suggested. Along here is the same, all along here you'll see earlier, I showed you a panned along here, along to the left, my left here, away from this corner. Right, so what I'm going to do now is is uh, just carry on putting a few more pieces of Depron in the corner here. And then I'll come back um, and I'll sh show you how I coat it all up. This black powder paint I've used here is a Brian Clegg black powder paint, which I purchased off eBay a few, about, about a year, two years ago. Uh, and it comes in a tub like this. And it is, I use a, um, a small pudding container to scoop out the black powder paint. I will then put that in another pudding bowl and then I'll add the Artex and here is the Artex which is white I'll just put it in basically just mix it up so you get a nice light grey mix remembering I've said it on many occasions the colour you mix it up dry which is what I'm doing now will be the colour it will dry back to so if you if you mix it up and it shows a light grey, it will dry back to that light grey mix, that light grey colour. If you mix it up a very dark colour, well, it'll dry dark. But when you put water with it, you can see the powder paint now coming up into the uh, into the white and going grey. If you um, when you put water with it it goes naturally goes very very dark don't worry about that because it will dry back as i said to a lighter color now you can see that that is now coming a lighter color I'm trying to do it without tipping it out the bowl which is currently not very easily not easy to do so you can see there we go there we are it's coming up a light light gray now and that just takes a little bit of water and um, because it's air drying it will take a long time to dry so you don't have to worry about it going hard 
The only time that you've got to worry about using up what you have in the bowl is if you put PVA glue with the mix. Uh, and if that goes hard, <laughs> you might just well throw it away because it's you cannot reuse it. If you're mixing up like I am here now and you put water with it, I use a little bit of warm water to aid the mix. You can always knock it back once it's gone hard with warm water again and you can use it again so you don't lose anything. But please bear in mind that if you're putting PVA glue with it, it will go hard and as I said, you won't be able to use it again. So now we have a light grey mix. Now, if you look up here, that's just our text painted on the on the wall on the back scene here. Well, that's the wall to my workshop, um, and that's the colour it will dry back to, as you see here. Right. So that's that. Now all I need to do is add water to that. Um, in this case, I'm using my old watercolour uh, water, so it's a bit dirty, that doesn't really matter. So you just need a little bit in there to get started. Now you can see it's really getting, it's quite lumpy. Just a little bit of the time because once you start, it starts to take on the water, it will get become very runny which is not a bad thing because I should be like in this instance I should be using it with a paintbrush so you see there quite a, um, a thick mix you may notice I'm using plastic spatulas these are cheap plastic uh, spatulas which I uh, and pallet knives which I bought uh, a few years ago off of um, Amazon I think it was uh, I used use them when I did some modelers weekends um, up in the Midlands uh, and each of the uh, attendees had a set of uh, palette knives brushes and we worked through the um, the way a way which I use uh, do landscapes and it's not changed an awful lot in those years um, well I haven't changed much because I found this to be a very very good way of making landscapes and Artex in particular is very very useful as I have said it air dries it is not a chemical dry drying um, product Artex it air dries things like polypillar and the like they dry quickly and hard because they've been used in construction and in decorating. So therefore, they have to be quick on the dry. So uh, this isn't. This is an air drying product. So um, you can quicken up, speed speed up the process. Uh, you've seen me do in the past with a hair dryer. So there we are. That's that's it mixed up. I'll actually use a paintbrush to apply it to this area over here. In this case, I'm using an inch and a half good quality paintbrush, but I wouldn't suggest you do that just because I had it to hand that I'm using it. The idea really is to put a, a surface on the Depron that will um, take watercolour. And I use watercolour paint quite a lot because I can change the colour, the tone, quite simply by diluting it. If I don't like what I've done, I can change it by floating water into it. You can see it's not quite dry in that panel adhesive. So I'm going to leave that area alone and do the bits that are dry. So you see the process is quite simple really. Now I've started to do this on here. You 
cover up that plasticky look and you can start to see um, the rock. It doesn't have to be a perfect finish. That's the one thing about this. You can be a slapdash as you like, really. I'll just add a little bit of water to my paintbrush. And um, push it on. <coughs> There's a bit of colour in this paintbrush from my, well, I've been painting the back scene. Which is uh, not a problem because uh, it's not all one colour, the slate. The slate rock, I should say. And you can see here, I've got a, a piece painted in watercolour, which I'll just add to that surface just to bring it out so it's almost in 3D. This is this will look 3D, but this because it is, it's got height, depth, and width. But um, because this is a flat surface, occasionally just to bring it out a little bit, and you can. And the beauty is you can stipple this stuff, which is if you may remember those of you who are old enough to know there was Artex ceilings, which were all the rage in the 70s and 80s in. in um, houses on the ceilings it was that you could get stippled you can get combed you can get cracked leather um, all sorts of uh, patterns and because Artex lends itself it pretty much stays where you put it um, and years ago it was um, it had asbestos in the in the mix well I have to say very pleasant uh, product to use now because it hasn't got that in the uh, in the mix anymore. Artex is pretty much asbestos three. In fact, I think it is asbestos three. It wouldn't be sub free. They wouldn't be able to sell it if it was uh, loaded with asbestos or anything like asbestos. I'm going to use a smaller brush now. I'll put that down there for a minute. Um, just to get into the areas like that. Oh, you can use your palette knife as well, which is what I'll, I will be doing in a minute. But uh, when you brush it on, you can work it quite nicely into the uh, depth prop. And that's spelt D E P O A P O. I'll start again. D E P R O N Deprom. You can look it look it out, search it out on the internet. Uh, you can buy it in small pieces. Uh, you get various thicknesses. I've got this as a sheet which was six by four and six mil thick. Having given the rock face a bit of a blast with the hot hair dryer, the uh, difference in thicknesses of the Artex on the face is very noticeable in this particular piece of uh, work with the very dark areas here and the lighter areas here. Um, of course, that will all dry back to the lighter colour here, which is a shame really because I think it looks quite nice. But then again, you see, I have watercolours that will bring that back. The track work, by the way, is a 3D printed track from uh, Boot Lane Works. And that will be sprayed grey and picked out. And all the surface around here will be pretty much filled up with rubbish and whatever is lying around. The little stub point here, which, which is um, part of this little, almost like a head shunt really, just this bit here. It's operated manually. I've got a little spring in there from Pico, a little centre over spring, and that holds it in place. Same as I have over here. Let's move that out the way. Oh, I have mentioned it before. But you'll see when I flick that over, that will hold over. 
and the same there. That's been sprayed with primer, grey primer. All these joints and stuff that you see here will be filled over. This area here will be a bit, bit of water. It's not there yet, but that's got to be varnished because that'll be trickling down that crack there. And the same along here, really. There'll be lots and lots of tears. If I've mentioned this before, or water. I'm going to take the smaller paint brush. I'm holding this uh, phone now so that I'm using a iPhone to uh, do the videos, by the way. Um, I've got in closer so you can see it uh, a lot clearer than the previous pieces. And you can see there, well, I mustn't keep saying you can see because you can see. Um, I'm actually layering it on quite thickly. Um, mainly because I want to get some detail in and you can do that with a paintbrush like that that will dry back quite nicely when it's finished you can see just just here how it's uh, drying back and up here as I, I said a minute ago this area here you can see the difference between this and this and when it's dry um, the watercolour will take beautifully to it because it's very porous um, which is what you need with watercolour otherwise you'll just roll off the surface Quite a, a thick lump of artex on there. It's quite an interesting project this because um, I'm looking at the camera, uh, uh, well at the, at the phone um, screen while I'm doing this and it gives you a different perspective on how it looks because Looking at it um, when you're doing it, rather than through the lens, uh, it looks very different, very, very different. And you can see your mistakes with the camera where you can't, because the brain tends to wash those out and you have to really look at it to see how it's coming up. But when you've got it on a screen like this as you're doing it, it's uh, quite useful. You see all these sort of stripy bits here that's come in there. You can see that when that's painted with watercolour, that will look quite, quite uh, effective. As it has over here, I'll show you what I mean by that. If you look here and down here on the tunnel entrance, incidentally, that area there will be filled up so won't be having any locomotives dropping down to the floor through a hole in the earth <laughs> uh, it is going a lighter color that's a little bit thinner artex on the surface uh, it's a bit thicker where it's dark but it is oh, i've said it many times drying back to the color you mixed it up dry initially <laughs> light you can now see where I was coming from with the painted part of the back scene. This is all flat here. All flat. In a curve as well if you may remember in the earlier video this board here yeah see the joint there which I'll take out in a little bit later on with a bit of paint but I've blended it you can't see it down here but it is there and you can't really see it down there. So it does work. Um, 
I'm using photographs I took a few years ago. Um, this is Denolic. Uh, I use them as reference. Sorry about the blotch of paint on the bottom right hand corner there. Um, but it's only a piece of print paper, so um, not a photograph as such. It's a photograph printed on paper. Very useful because uh, you can see the different colours and different shades. And it's a light grey, you see, it's not far off colour wise. Okay, you're limited by your, your paint, um, uh, your print, I should say. There's another one here, I've got a couple. I mentioned earlier about um, silver birch trees growing. This is a photograph of uh, the incline which I've got behind me and which I'm going to be installing hopefully at a later date. You see those um, up here, those silver birch and down here. Well, I've kind of set them up on there and there, but they're just loosely detailed. So. And, and you can see the, the rock again. You see, look at look at that. That's on a, a sloping cut. That's where the uh, slate runs at an angle. And I should be replicating that further around on here, some, just a bit further along. Um, and here I have another photograph. Again, gives you an idea. what I'm trying to achieve it I'm just using it as references reference really for the way it all sits um, and the colors and that's quite a purpley color there so I've started to do uh, though you can't see it in this actually but there is some purpley paint in there and in there right I shall leave that to dry and I'll come back when I do a little bit more there and that'll be finished next time you, you see the video and this up here will be more detailed but I'm happy with that back scene up there pretty much um, here it's not quite there yet but it's not far off but it's just gently going around and this bit is the bit that belongs down here from there Thank you for watching. I hope you found this little video interesting and helpful. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, which is a thumbs up, and to press the bell for notifications on further videos.